Hi, I'm Ryan, and today I'm going to show you the program that I wrote that makes it easy to inventory your video game collection. And you can do that just by taking your video games and using a simple USB scanner and scanning the barcode. The setup I have here is a consumer grade monitor, and on the back, I've mounted a Raspberry Pi 3 and then just plugged in my USB barcode scanner into this thing. So the script I wrote is running on Python, but you don't need to use a Pi 3 for Python. You can use Windows or Mac or Linux. But the Pi 3 makes it really convenient because if you have it bolted to a monitor and Wi-Fi enabled, you have a portable unit that lets you scan your inventory. Oops. And here's a game. And we'll scan the barcode. And what's happening here is it's parsing together the URL with the barcode in it and searching the pricecharting.com website and scraping that HTML for the specific data that I'm looking at. So I want to make the title, when it was released, the genre, and the use, complete in box, and new prices. And then this gets written to an Excel file, and then we just rinse and repeat. So I'll scan some in. Now I'm going to quit the program so it closes the file and if we open this up you can see here's the raw data. So let's open this up in an Excel file. I've moved over to my Windows PC to screen cap this. I'm logging into the Raspberry Pi via SSH and I'm going to find the CSV file I just created using my program and move this over to my Windows PC and then we'll open this file with Microsoft Excel. Since it's comma delimited it's automatically going to place things in the appropriate columns and rows and you can see that raw data that I just captured. Organized by title, UPC, genre, and the three prices that I'm grabbing from pricecharting.com. So I'm going to talk about this application that I wrote in a little bit more detail. It was written in Python and it uses the package Beautiful Soup and requests to search a URL and then scrape data from the HTML web page. So again, the workflow is you have a game, a barcode on it. You scan that game. This is what the barcode scanner that I'm using. It was $17 and it works pretty okay then the application will take that barcode, search a URL for that barcode at pricecharting.com, and then look for specific tags or data in that HTML, scrape them off, and then organize that into a database that we can make. So here's a box of games, and just using the same process, I'm gonna name the file that I'm gonna create and then if you're doing a big run of just the single console type, you can enter in the header information and it'll just write that in for you and then you start scanning. And then the beeps are all customizable, whatever you want. It just gives you a prompt to let you know you've scanned something so you, can, you don't have to stare at the screen while you're doing this. So what's happening in the background is it's gonna paste the URL together based off the barcode and it's going to find the page for the said specific game. Then I've got tags that are looking for specific details in that HTML. So if I want to search for complete price, I'll use specific tags wherever they are. And I'm using Google Chrome and inspecting the page source to find what this specific number is and the tags around it. And then I'll just put those tags in my program and say, I want you to search that HTML for these specific tags, and then when you find that text, I want you to scrape it off, and then maybe we'll append it using specific string operations, but that is repeated for the game title, the loose use price, the genre, the release date, and so on. And that's all this program does. It's the very basics to scraping HTML. You can use the same process for making a weather station that just tells you what the weather is. And this app isn't new. I've seen people use 
these type of programs that are on their smartphones and they have a miniature barcode scanner and they're at the thrift store just scanning like vinyl records and books and looking at Amazon's selling prices for whatever they're looking at to maybe make make a dollar and flip a dollar. It's it's I'm not the first to do this, but I just wanted to do my take on it since I'm into or I am a video game enthusiast, as some would say. So I've scanned this whole lot of GameCube games, which takes I don't know, about a second per scan. And then this is the raw common delimited data that you can open up in a Excel-like program. This is Microsoft Excel. And then if you want to calculate what your lot of games is worth, you can just do that. Um, I changed the categories just so you can see that the software I wrote, which is still a work in progress, can add spaces for changing console type. But if you want to calculate the sum, you can just do that there. Now, what data can you get from this other than its value? Uh, well, a little bit, but it's only useful to you. So these are the GameCube games separated by genre that I have. So mostly action adventure, fine. These are the top 10 valuable GameCube games that I own. So that's that's kind of no surprise. These are the big hitters. This is the bottom 10 valuable, so the least valuable that I have. Not really surprised here. Resident Evil has been re-released a bunch of times by Capcom. And Sega is also guilty of whoring out the original Genesis classics, so no surprise. Uh, just keep in mind, these prices are, take a grain of salt with this. Uh, this is based off the cumulative sold price for games off of eBay. So what this game is worth to you is different from what it's worth to a bunch of people who opened their wallet and paid money for it. Just keep that in mind. Uh, again, if a game is only sold once per year, that price really isn't a good representation of what it's worth. But still, it's better than nothing. So if, if you've got a collection of games and you just want to know what they're worth, you can quickly scan them. It'd be great for people who have their own like independent video game stores. Or you just want to prove to that one guy in Craigslist you're not paying 100 bucks for Super Mario Kart 64. Now, certain things like re-releases, HD remakes, HD remasters, and just re-releases and rebundles and releases of classic games on a digital platform, this affects what games are worth. So this tool, though you can calculate the worth of your lot today, what happens to that value in a year, 10 years, will be greatly influenced by the availability of those games still and then what has come over as far as re-releases. So there are some flaws to this program. Obviously, you need the UPC barcode, and if you've ever bought used games from GameStop, this is super annoying, but that's one one downfall. The other is like the Nintendo's back catalog of pretty much all their cartridge games require the retail box, which has the barcode on there. And those really haven't survived through time, but you can still overcome that by just searching by title and then making your own barcode and maybe pasting that or taping that to your actual game. Aside from looking at the price of a stack of games, you can also look at some other interesting things depending on what data you're scraping from what HTML. So I have a pretty average sample of games for the last three generations. And we're going to look at the genre first-person shooter over the PlayStation 1 through Xbox 360. So right after Doom came out, first-person shooters started to make their way to the PlayStation. And you can see it's still a really small genre. PlayStation 2, it did start to increase, but it wasn't until the localization and popularity of the Xbox 360 and, you know, the Call of Duty craze that this genre exploded, and you can see my tastes followed with it. So, only useful to me, but again, you can adapt this to however you see fit. Okay, well, that's all I have to show you. I really appreciate you guys watching, and remember, Python, beautiful soup, and requests... Give it some time, it will show you some magical things. Thanks for watching, everyone.